Good morning, I'm Josh from the Toucan Driving School. Uh, for any of you that don't know me, if you haven't already, like and subscribe. Today I'm going to be sharing with you how to perform a cockpit drill on a car and really what a, a cockpit drill is. So every time we get into a car, whether it's your car or anyone else's car, you should always perform a cockpit drill. Now an easy way to remember this, you can use the acronym DSSM. What does that stand for? D, nice and simple, for doors. Make sure your door is closed. Now on all modern cars, there should be a warning light on the dashboard that lets you know if any of your doors are still open. However, saying that, it's still best to double check. Now I like to just give it a quick rattle if you notice this door here. There you go. Part two, the first S is for seat. So now we adjust the seat. Now there's three parts to the seat. There's the bottom, there's the middle, and there's the top. Now most seats are going to be adjusted by using levers on the side of the seat or on the front of the seat. So firstly, we're going to adjust our distance to the steering wheel and to the pedals. So for this, I need to make sure that my feet can press the pedals. So if I'm too close to the pedals, my knees are going to be cramped up and overly bent. It's past, it's a 90 degree angle and it's not very comfortable. I'm feeling very close to the wheel. Um, there's nothing comfortable about it. Now at this angle, my leg is actually pressing into the seat if you look. So again, this means I'm stretching, which again, this isn't going to be good either. It's going to make my leg tired very quickly. Uh, it's not, not an ideal driving position at all. So here's the lever that you pull up to adjust the seat to go backwards or forwards. So this is a far better driving position now, because as you can see, I can press the pedal comfortably. My leg's not pressing into the chair, which means I'm not straining and I'm not too close either. Okay, so that part of the seat is adjusted. Now we need to adjust the back. So the next one is the back support. Now for this, you should make sure your back support is as straight as possible. It's too far back. When you're driving, your head is going to be still straight while your body's, while, while your back is right far leaning back, which means you haven't got a straight support, which means the weight is actually on your neck rather than your, your spine, uh, which is in the long run going to damage your posture. So ideally, you want the seat as comfortable as possible. But again, I can't have it too far forward like this. It's not comfortable. So I go for somewhere in between. The next part is to adjust the head restraint. So all I'm doing here is I'm pressing the button on the side of the head restraint while using my shoulder, because I like to call this the, the shoulder head restraint technique, and getting that head restraint up. Now the head restraint's there in case there's an accident. If you hit a car or a car hits you and you get bashed about, your head's going to bounce back off that head restraint. So it's important that the center of your head is around the center of that restraint to, to give you the best poss possible protection. So ideally you want the center of the head restraint to be level with the top of your ears or eye level. Okay, so next we're going to adjust the steering wheel. Now, all modern cars now have an adjustable steering wheel. So on my car, the lever to move the steering wheel is underneath. So you just gently pull that lever out and now you can move the wheel. So you can move it on two axes. You can move it up, down, in, out. Now let's start with the in and out. First of all, you want to make sure that your wrist can sit on top of that wheel, not your fingers, your wrist. And you need to make sure your wrist can sit there with a slight bend in your arm. If there's no bend, it means you are stretching. It means you, you're going to get tired when you're driving around. So I, if it's not quite there, you want to pull that wheel out slightly until you've got that slight bend in your arm. Once you're happy with that, the next thing is up and down. You don't really want the wheel blocking the dash or blocking the windscreen if you can help it. Once you're happy with your wheel adjustment, you need to gently hold it in place with one hand, just support it if need be, and then gently lock it with the other hand. And carefully you don't press it, because if you touch it in any way, you're gonna move it, and then you're gonna have to start the whole thing again. That'll be a bit of a sausage move. Make sure the lever's locked back up, so the wheel's not moving again when you're driving round. Now the lever's locked, the wheel, as you can see, it's not moving an inch. Number five, next we're adjusting the mirrors. So we have the central mirror. The central mirror is a flat mirror, so this gives us a true image. What do I mean by this? Well, I mean, compared to the, the side mirrors, the central mirror is a flat mirror. The two side mirrors, your left and your right mirror, these are both convex mirrors. This means they don't give you a true image. They make things look further away than they actually are, but they actually give you more vision, which means you get more vision on either side. For a really accurate view of behind you, you're going to use your central mirror. So first of all, let's start by adjusting the central mirror. So to do this, you're just going to use your left hand and you're going to use the left hand on the left side of the mirror while sitting back in your normal position to just 
adjust the mirror so you can see the entire rim of the back window. This will give you the best possible view behind you. Now, why do I say make sure you're in your, your, your correct seat position? Because if you're like this, you lean forward and you adjust the mirror, then you sit back, well, now your mirror's out again. So this is why you don't use two hands, because when you use two hands, you tend to lean forward. Okay, so best possible idea is to use your left hand and just adjust the mirror with the left hand so you can see the entire rim of the window. Perfect. Next, you want to adjust the side mirrors. Now, most cars now do have electric side mirrors. My particular car just has a slidey thing on the right side of the door here. You just slide it across in the direction of the mirror and then you just use a controller to adjust the mirror. Now, I always believe the best way to do this is just to use two fingers and just basically, you just wanna see two fingers of the car in the left side of the mirror. So just gently over the mirror and yes, that's approximately two fingers. Other ways to do it in my particular car, I just like to be able to just see the corner of the front door handle in the very right bottom left corner of this mirror. And ideally you want about half a view of the ground and half a view of the sky. So I do that, so I adjust both side mirrors. The final thing, just make sure you've got enough fuel. Well, for this, the ignition is going to have to just be on. If you're learning to drive, your instructor will be in charge of this, so don't worry about it. So in summary, one, check the doors are locked. Two, adjust your seat using the levers on the right side. Three, adjust your steering wheel. Four, put your seat belt on. Five, adjust your mirrors. And six, check your fuel. That is the end of the cockpit drill, ladies and gents. Thank you very much for coming. If you haven't already, subscribe, and you won't miss out on the next video coming up soon. Thank you.